Hey folks, before we get started in this video, there's something I want to address that we've had a lot of people asking about. Uh, I've meant to, to address it and talk about it previously, but uh, it just never came up. In our la latest short that we uh, put out talking about the beaver, a lot of people asked about it, so let's talk about it. What we're talking about is my ear. That right there, folks, is called cauliflower ear. I was not born like that. I earned it by wrestling when I was younger in high school. Yeah, that's me. I first wrestled in Chicago uh, for a few years, then I moved to Memphis, Tennessee, and I wrestled uh, uh, down there uh, at Kirby High School uh, in Memphis. And there I met the uh, a group of people that would uh, later become uh, extremely influential in my life. Um, I am still very good friends with a lot of the kids that I wrestled with. Uh, some of those relationships, again, are 30 years in the making. Um, the coach that the coaching staff uh, that I had um, just <laughs> the the impact and influence in my life was profound and there are not enough words in the English dictionary for me to even begin to give you an idea of the uh, of, of how amazing it was uh, to be a part of that group when I was a part of it there are a couple of videos out there of me wrestling and I'm going to leave links in the description below if you want to go check those out. Uh, they're a little long, but uh, definitely worth it. The wrestling experience for me was life-altering. Uh, I had no idea I needed it in my life, um, but I did. Uh, and over, you know, throughout all these years, some of the emotions that I went through during that time has carried with me all of these years and uh to coach Holmes specifically um thank you very much all right enough of that let's get into the video in the last video you saw us unsuccessfully release the chickens in their new chicken run which is here um unfortunately a couple things are wrong number one can't even see the fence and so the dogs not knowing it's there they can just basically run into it the other thing is uh it's not high enough uh, we had one of the olive eggers uh, louise she jumped off of the perch <laughs> in the coop and flew up and over the fence so uh today what we're gonna do is we have some green plastic poultry fencing that we're gonna add uh, and we're gonna actually add two layers to get this fence higher and then a little bit later We're gonna be adding some cedar posts and then putting a ridge line and throwing some net over it But right now uh, we got to get the fencing and get that installed
All right, so we've got the first layer of the green poultry fence up. And the next step is we're going to try to extend it up to here by using what we had left and cutting it in half, which Jen had to do and was no easy task by any stretch of the imagination. Are you feeling nasty right now? I am feeling nasty right now. Okay, yeah. Do you want to start on this end and go that way? You think that might be easier? It's up to you, whatever you want. I'll try to staple this side in. So Surely. Slowly but surely. But I don't know, Shirley. No, maybe that'll be the next chicken. Laverne? Laverne and Shirley. Laverne and Shirley. That is the next two chickens. All right, Laverne and Shirley. You heard it here. Get that piece of fit right here. So unfortunately, we weren't able to spend a lot of time today on this project uh, because we did have some other things that we had to do, uh, not only here around the homestead, but we also had to leave uh, for a little bit. But that said, we did get all of that green poultry fencing up and we love it. It really creates a barrier now, one that you can see, whereas before with just the the metal fencing you really had a hard time seeing it and if i couldn't see it i know the dogs are having a hard time seeing it and probably certainly the chickens as well so now that we have the green fence in here uh, you can certainly see it and i'm hoping that everybody else can see it as well now the next step uh, and we'll attack this tomorrow is we are going to be uh, adding some uh, beams in the ground get four posts in the ground we're going to throw a header across and then we're going to throw a netting over it to completely enclose and protect our chickens from aerial predators so that's the uh, next step in this endeavor but we're going to do that tomorrow Nobody can fly out of here. One, two, 
Now because it's so wet still, I can't really dig into the ground or auger into the ground, so I can't work on the ridge pole with the netting just yet. It's gonna be a couple more days at least. I wanna let some of this ground dry out. Otherwise, when I start to, to use the auger, it's just gonna mud up and it's gonna be a, a waste of time. You know, until then, if the chickens get out, they get out. Uh, we're just going to leave the chickens in the run without the dogs outside. I don't want to have any complications with the dogs and the chickens. Uh, it's just it's just responsible not to have them out at the same time if there is a concern of the chickens getting out because the chickens are going to get attacked. So uh, now people can say, well, we can train our dogs and that's fine, but I don't really want to put the dogs and the chickens in a position which is which is going to stress them out unnecessarily. So. We'll get to the point where we train the dogs with the chickens, but not today and uh, not right now. So for now, I'm outside. The dogs are inside with Jen. We're going to let the chickens do their thing and uh, hope they just enjoy the ground uh, much more than they enjoy flying out of the coop. <laughs> 